Hi, this is Jackie Phillips. Hi, this is Sifa Romaine. Welcome to Reset. On Power 91.1 FM WTYJ. Reset because you, you deserve, deserve it. it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Reset. Welcome to Reset. Welcome. How are you, Moss? I am doing fantastic, thank you. I'm excited to introduce our guest, Moss Sajedi. He is this amazing transformational expert. And I'm just like thrilled to have you today. So thank you for being thank on our show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. So you have an extraordinary story. I do. You went from computer programmer to right. programming people. <laughs> right. So yeah, before I used to program people after my second year death. Uh, well, I went to programming computers yes. after my second year death. I uh, started programming people. So I transform individuals' lives, uh, health, wealth, uh, spirituality, relationships, right? Much easier, faster than uh, well, what's out there. So let's back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you've had two near-death experiences. Yes. So after the first one, tell mm -hmm. us tell us what happened. How did you even have the first one? The first one is a college job. I used to unload rail cars. Mm -hmm. It was a college job, a warehouse. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to unload rail cars, and they have these moving walls inside the rail cars. Uh, I got my jaws crushed oh my in goodness. one of them. Yeah, and it sounds you know like a near death experience, much horrific, exp uh, you know, experience. No, not really. It's actually the two best experiences I've ever had. You know, it's the closest thing that you can get to say God, what I use call pure source now, uh, and then come back and live to tell about it. Yeah. So, so what was that happened? like? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what is the first? What was the first near-death experience like? And then what happened after? Were you awakened after? I would was. you say? So yeah. the first near-death experience um, uh, was well. Just to back up, uh, you know, I was always say searching okay. for, you know, that one say uh, answer. Yes. Right. That well answers everything. Yeah. Right? Like Einstein. Yeah. Really looking for that one equation. So, you know, I went through religion, I studied all the religious books, I, I, I did the motivational books, I did the success books, and, you know, I found out that, well, none of those people were really, really happy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So, what was missing, you know, what was that internal thing that we all desire that was missing? Well, I found out, and maybe that's why I had that first yes. year death. Um, so, I had my jaws crushed, um, there, there was these moving walls, basically, and I started pulling on them. Uh, and then it gave way, and it was about a half ton wall, and just crushed oh my, my jaw. So I, I was dangling from the ceiling, basically, with, from my jaw. So, uh, so I, I, I was pulling out of my body. Uh, I was looking at my body, kind of like a mirror image, like yeah. a mirror mm -hmm. reflection, and pulling out. I'm going, wow, that must really hurt. And I'm oh. going, oh, why doesn't it hurt? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized, oh my God, I'm dead. Oh, yeah. And it wasn't terrifying. How long were you dead for? Uh, probably, well, my teammates probably maybe like about a minute. You know, I would say out of my body. Or yeah. 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 How old were you, by the way? 22. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah. Okay. So at 22, you know, always searching uh, again. That was the first time as soon as I realized that I'm dead, uh, an awakening came up. And did you, did see, you see it? it? Yeah. Right. yeah. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> did you see something, spirit, light, source, yes. so, God? So. Tell us everything. Okay. Everything. So, okay. so in the beginning, I started to realize that, one, we are much grander than the accumulation total of who we think we are. So mm -hmm. our life experience. Because mm -hmm. I saw my figure there. Uh -huh. It was just like, say, 1%. Of who we are and then it just kind of snapped open and then I came into my true being you know it's like a grand universe and that first time I've ever felt say that much joy and love at that level yeah and, and so much power and security you know because you knew you were loved exactly well you knew more than you knew you were loved you were loved and everything associated mm -hmm. with it. Uh, and then you, well, I sent it through the rail car, just like they do in the movies, you know, how you just kind of ripple through. And then I went into a tunnel of light. Uh, and that tunnel of light, I'm sure you've heard, you know, some of the introductory tunnel, like you meet your loved ones, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's, uh, I believe there's like 13 different layers, processes that you go through. Uh, I managed to go to the level of, um, of reviewing your life. 
You've heard of that. Yes. yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. For you. Right. Yeah. So it's not like there's an angel there or a saint there or God there, you know, on the other side, and, you know, accounting. It's like, okay, you did this. Yeah. Did this <laughs> Over here, I'm not Should sure about it. That. <laughs> you know, it was, it, and it was, it wasn't a life review, actually. You relive your life, which really still distorts me at this time because how can you live 22 years, in my case, right, in just maybe a flash? Mm. Right? So time was really distorted. Mm. You know, in this reality, uh, time is, uh, is a constant, right? Mm -hmm. In that reality, actually, time is a variable. You know, and you can adjust it. So you relive life, and the reason why you know they say your life flashes through because our mental capacity—we just don't have that much capacity in our mind to you know live 22 years, you know, just like a flash. But the reason or the purpose for that is actually you review your life, and then you start to see that oh my gosh, you know, my life was perfect as it was. Right? There was no like should have. There was no like could have. It was it was you relive it to have say a grander understanding of why things happened and then move ahead or move beyond it. And that's what I do now, actually, is like, no matter what's happened to you in your life in the yeah. past, right? Mm -hmm. You can always, there's always a benefit to, to it, so you can grow higher and see yourself from higher perspective. I have so many questions right now. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. you do, too. Well, I'm just thinking, obviously, our show... Wait second year. Yeah, I can't no, wait. No, no, the first one. <laughs> but wait, we, we, we're not done with this first one. <laughs> right no, but I'm just thinking, everything you're saying is, you know, our show is called Reset. Right. Mm -hmm. So what you're Major. saying... The ultimate reset. It, yeah, it's yeah. the ultimate reset. reset. But also, yes. you are saying, you know, you can reset your life. You yes. restart over. Right. And that's what I do really now. Yeah. Is like people don't have to go through a near-death experience to yes. reset. I basically connect you the same way I crossed over, basically, without the near-death. So you reset your life. To, I have, go, ahead. go ahead. Well, I just want to ask this so we don't get too far off yeah. of it. When you said earlier that our, we are much grander than we realize, and we're yeah. only operating at 1%, right. explain in layman terms what that would mean to our audience, because sure. that's a little confusing. Of course. You know, what we think we are here as humans, you know, we, what, what we grow up, we go to school, we get a job. Uh, we're basically slaves, mm -hmm. right? yeah. Uh, and that's not really what life was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Like you know, you're really here to understand life, or what I call, say, understanding density of the joy of being here in physical form. Mm -hmm. right? You don't have to. It's not about, and this is what most people think. You know, it's not about, um, uh, you know, trying to do or or. It's, 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 what do they call it? Karma. It's not about karma. It's not that you were bad in a previous lifetime. It's not that you were sinful in this lifetime and you're trying to look good in the eyes of God and so on like that. It's really about understanding, say, life at its purest form. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see it uh, in people who, you know, really, say, connect mm -hmm. at, at their higher form. They're just grand. They're just beautiful. Mm. Yes, you that's see that light exactly exactly shine right through. Yes. Yeah, and that's a, that was an interesting term when you said your your pure, it was a pure self or pure identity or pure something you said. It, yes. it struck me because we talk a lot about your authentic self. Yes, mm -hmm. and so when you said that, I was like, did you experience your authentic self? Oh yes, you that's your, your authentic self. That's who you truly are, because. You know, we're, and I have a very different, uh, and again, all what I do is very scientific, so it's very different than what most people think, because most people think that, you know, your spirit is housed inside you, right? Our bodies are a temple of the soul. It's really not. Actually, our spirits, they create the image that we are. We're mostly, what well, a hologram, as I would call it. So, so, so what happens is that, say, your spirit is in a timeless space, right? Uh, it creates density or our body, right? And so we have to get really dumbed down mm -hmm. to come into this level. And that's why we, you know, I always say that we're just a smidgen of who we think we are. Okay? But if we knew who we think we are, we couldn't say, stay here. Right? Uh, we'd be vibrating too high mm -hmm. to stay here and have this density around us. Do you think that's why people die young? Uh, well, there's a lot of reasons. Well, I mean, yeah, that, I didn't mean to make that so, like, See, In other words, so, she's saying, so like, they, they come to a place where they have that understanding, they vibrate at a higher level, 
Right. So they choose to tra they choose to transcend. Sure, they they can choose to transcend, but I think most of those people for just tapping into them, um, I can I can understand what you're, you're saying, but the, if they really understood, uh, and they're a vital, say mm -hmm. they're healthy, they would actually choose to stay here because it's much better, grander at this level. It's the journey, and again, maybe through religion or society, the journey is not to struggle in this lifetime, and then it's like, gosh, I struggle, now I'm on vacation, I'm going to go and enjoy myself on the other side. It's not like that at all. It's really about understanding who you are here at a higher level, uh, and in religious terms, you know, heaven on earth, right? right? That's what they talk about. That's what the whole thing is about, really being walking here on earth at spirit form or spirit level. Which is the second question I have, because yes. you said your life is perfect yes. as it is, right? Yes. Um, people go through struggle, challenge, mm -hmm. happiness, depression, sadness, all kinds right. of experiences here. So when you talk about your life is perfect as it is, right? Right, and them understanding that experience. I know that sure. everything happens for a reason. Things fall into place, and it all fits in perfectly. Right, and we can talk about that because mm -hmm. um, most of us think that that reason is because we've been bad, and you know, or we've done something wrong, or something like that. So, so that's two parts. Um, um, what was the first one? The life. It, it all it all falls in. Like for instance, when I look back at my life, and I look back at some of the things that happened, if they didn't happen, I couldn't be who I am today. Sure. Right? Sure. So, in sure. essence, when you're saying that your life is perfect as it is, is that what you're referring to? Well, life is perfect as it is if you start to understand that there is a higher order to it, okay? And if you understand that you can always say learn and ascend to a higher order. Uh, so, I'm not saying that, you know, if you've been abused as a child, you know, your life is perfect. I'm not saying that at all, but if you've been abused as a child, you know, what can you say, learn from that space to help you ascend higher? Okay. And you use your, you use your pain for purpose. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Yes. So, so once you understand that where you are, uh, and again, most people, the reason why they struggle in life is that they're always trying to get away from where they are. Mm -hmm. You know, they're mm -hmm. always lying about themselves. They have this facade, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, your spirit really, say, can't connect with you at a deeper level to help you out. Mm -hmm. right? This is really about connecting to your spirit at such a high level and understanding yourself at such a high level that uh, your spirit looks around. Your spirit is not supposed to be in luck. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once you get connected to your spirit at a higher level, and again that's what I do, uh, abundance comes into you naturally. Mm -hmm. right. uh, whatever it might be, health, uh, wealth, whether it's 10,000 a month, a million a month, whatever it might be, uh, that satisfies you, then it's all good. Do you believe, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I know. But he's just so many things he's saying and then you know so many, I've met so many spiritual teachers that that share very similar ideas. One teacher talked about the sleeping masses. Right. I see that. Yeah. Is that your 200 year old teacher? No, no, not that one. There's one no, teacher, yeah, who's a, yeah, this is a this master. Is a different one. Oh, he's like, are we talking about? And he's like, the 200 year old This is a different teacher. But, but she talked about this, she actually talked about the sleeping masses quite yeah. often. So I'm hearing you and I'm talking, and I hear like, and I know that, or I believe that, people are asleep because they allow themselves to be asleep. Yes. And they fall deep. into the trap of the distraction of television and materialism and this. Are they yeah. asleep because it's too painful to be awake? Well, uh, are they asleep if they're too painful to be awake? Actually, uh, they're asleep because I see, I see people as programmed. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and most people think that they've done something in their lives to get where they are, right? whether mm -hmm. it's successful or whether it's destructive, mm -hmm. right? They've done something here physically, mm -hmm. right? But you know, I can scan you. That's one of my abilities that I was gifted with. Like, I'm like I, I did a session with yes. you. I can scan you. I can scan your family. I can, I can, I can understand, say, the programs that you run, mm -hmm. right? The underlying programs mm -hmm. that's running in an individuals, right? That cause us to be the way we are. Mm -hmm. So if you change those programs, then your life radically changes. Changes, that's right. And it's very interesting because... You just learned about that this weekend. I did learn about that's that this right. weekend with systems. Right. I became a master coach this weekend. Yeah. Yes. 
and we talked about systems. Barry Fowler has this whole thing about programming and right. systems, and it's, it is fascinating, and it makes a lot of sense because if, say, I'm a child of the restaurant business, mm -hmm. and I was programmed that you work hard, you work like a dog, you make money, yep. you know, but then I found myself, you were always on that hamster wheel. Yep. And I mean, we, we talked yeah, about we talk that about when we that. did our session, but it was interesting because you knew that. Right without knowing anything about me, yes. you know. But um, it is true, because if you look at someone and you see how they operate, you can kind of like see like if you meet their family or know about their family, oh, that's where that's coming from. Right. Exactly. You know, even if it's not a destructive pattern, no, it could be a pattern. I mean, working hard is a There's great thing, it. but no. it's also not a good thing if it keeps you a slave to your life. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, well, if you think about it, what I do is like, um, well, I'm that geek programmer, right? Uh, and you know, you're running a bunch of programs. I call it a frequency signature mm -hmm. that you're running, uh, depending on your likes, you know, who you're attracted to, and so on and so on. Uh, and I can kind of scan through and go, oh, this is where your code is off. messed up or yeah. off, right? This is where, say, you've got your mother's code in you mm -hmm. that you borrowed, right? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. most of us really weren't, say, awakened at a level when we came into this life to create, say, the life that we wanted. Basically, it's like I'm having what mom's having or mm -hmm. dad, what dad's having and so on. Like that. But do you think we come into the world pure? You know, like, I remember being, and now I'm like going to share a lot right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, careful. <laughs> no, but I remember being... She's going to keep the show interesting now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> So, um, but I remember being, you know, a very young child, and I mean, I still have the gift where I would say to my dad, they're going to steal from you. Yep. Don't hire those people. Yep. I mean, like, five, six, seven, eight years old, and he would be so annoyed with me, mm -hmm. and then I would be right. Would be and then, you know, so when we're very young, we're very pure, and Don't we can know. read things, and read meaning you read that energy, or you feel the energy, or you just know, but then as we get older... We don't hear the Holy Spirit or, you know, right. I, that's what I call it, hear sure. God. You know, we don't, we don't even acknowledge that in us, that, that power in us right. that knows that discernment. Yeah. It's like it gets like thrown away because then we lose our purity. Right. Um, yeah, when we're born, you know, we're somewhat pure, but we're yeah. not, say, completely, completely awakened. Yeah. Or we would have never, say, created the life, mm -hmm. you know, that we have. And then you're interrupted, right, by whatever you're born exactly. into. Right, yeah. so you have a lot of, like, previous, like, lineage patterns, like mm -hmm. hereditary patterns, mm -hmm. right, like heart issues or, you know, diabetes or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. right? Those are, say, born into you, plus all the emotional issues, you know, the finance issues, all those things are, say, in your DNA, mm -hmm. right? So you're not that pure, mm -hmm. uh, although you have that ability of pureness because you're, well, it's the first time you've gotten into, say, space-time. Mm -hmm. So you're more aware, basically, of a higher order or a higher individual that you are, right? So that's where that purity comes from. Do you believe that, you know how they say we choose our experiences, we come here and choose our experiences, we choose our parents, is that your belief? I don't believe that at all. If we were, say, that awakened to choose our experiences, most of us would not choose the life that we have. Yeah. We really, really wouldn't. We'd be much higher, much grander. We wouldn't be in the say this minutia of, you know, being almost like a slave to life, right? Yeah. Or or, or people like um, you know, um, you know, getting abused yeah. all the time. Yeah. Right? Would they actually say choose that? Because it's not necessary for you to choose like being abused to learn something. Yeah. You know? but, yeah. And I, and I see tens of thousands of people. I've never seen anybody go, Oh yeah, I'm gonna sign up for being abused this lifetime so I can learn something. You know, it, it, it's it, no, I don't I don't believe that at all. Um, furthermore, you know, there's um well there's just you know, there's people who are really say poor and they go, Well, they might be more, you know, enlightened mm -hmm. because they're poor. Uh, I haven't really seen a single poor individual be really enlightened mm -hmm. because they wouldn't be suffering mm -hmm. if they were enlightened. Mm -hmm. It's not about being poor, it's not about being wealthy because I see a lot of wealthy individuals that suffer. who just suffer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's not about the money at all. 
right? But it's the awakening. Again, it's not anything here physical that we're doing or we have or we don't have, okay? It's the awakened level that you are at uh, to have that experience. So, uh, Do you believe that people are having experiences that try to awaken them, but yet they ignore Every day. It? Every day. There's tons and tons of, say, experiences, but most of us are running these programs we're all we're in hypnosis uh, i say we're, we're under anesthesia yes that's what i talk about in my talk i say that we're matrix. operating under anesthesia and your anesthesia can be your relationships yep. alcohol gambling cigarettes right. exactly. codependency of different kinds of relationships of course yeah right. how do we quit taking the anesthesia and become enlightened uh, well, I mean, what's like one step, obviously, if just on a daily basis, sure. meditation. One of the biggest steps is, well, meditation is really good, too. But then, you know, our monkey mind starts mm -hmm. kicking in yeah. and we get kicked out. Uh, but the best thing that I've found is to become really, really, say, present of what you're doing. So if you're taking a shower in the morning, you know, don't go, okay, what am I going to wear? What I'm, just feel the, start feeling the water, you know, on your body, your head, and so on. Uh, your spirit actually connects through you or with you much stronger because that's the only purpose spirit formed you in physical form, to have physical experiences. So once your spirit comes in, you would, you would not believe how much abundant you become. You would not believe how much happier life your life becomes, although you're in the same, say, experience that you are, or the same environment, you're just happy because your spirit's happy because it's connecting with you, it's awakening. So just totally be aware of what you're doing at any time. You know, when you see people texting, they're mm. out somewhere else. Yeah. And they live like that all day long. Mm. Yeah. You know, and they become an empty shell. Like you're right. When you're texting, be aware of your hands, be aware of your fingers, uh, and it'll be more enjoyable for you because your spirit's like joining in. Mm -hmm. So how do you help people become more present? Is there a technique you use? Sure. Uh, I don't know if philosophy it's a or technique or philosophy. I just kind of scan you and I go, oh, like for example, you know, if you have like health issues and I, by the way, I'm not a doctor. Or anything yes. Like, we, but I just, I can scan you and go, oh, you know, you've got health issues. Oh, you've got like diabetes or heart issues, whatever. You know, I can scan you like that. So I can actually scan you and go, you know, it's like, Moss, my relationship isn't working. I always get, say, uh, you know, connected to people who abuse me. Okay? Uh, and then I can go back to a time, say, where that, say, abuse or that pattern started. Mm -hmm. right? And most of the time, though, it's not really in their lifetime. It's usually the, like a mother or, you, you know, mother or father or somebody up the line in their family tree that has that pattern of abuse, and they say, run it. It's a generational it's a curse. Generation. Yeah, can I tell you? It's not a great story, but... No, uh, tell, yeah. <laughs> so, so I was working on this lady, and, uh, you know, I kept seeing there, she had a lot of, like, stomach issues. Mm -hmm. you know? And I go, well, did you lose some kids? And she go, no, no. Yeah, because she was really embarrassed, you know. Yeah. And this was on the phone. Um, and then I kept coming up. I go, I just see... Babies around you, and then she finally broke down. She goes, "Well, I have, I've had like three or four abortions." Mm -hmm. oh. and, and there's no judgment on my. No, mind. yeah. Um, uh, and then I go, "Well, you know," and just in that time, it just like released for her just to see, you know, that it released the pain and all the issues that she had. But I'm going, you know what? I, you know, just scanning your mom, yeah, because I can go back in history and scan her mom. It's like, well, your mom had a few abortions too. She goes, "Yeah," you know, uh, and I go, "Well." You know, and then I can go back to you know, her grandmother. It's like, you know, well, her, your grandmother had a few abortions too, and so did your aunt, right? And she's going, yeah. So, see, those kind of patterns, we don't think of it, but, you know, those are, that's an extreme pattern. But, yeah. you know, what about the subliminal type pattern? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The way you look at life, the way you look mm -hmm. at money, the way you look mm -hmm. at, you know, yourself. You know, mm -hmm. the self-respect and so on like that, uh, that come through that family lineage as well. So if you delete those patterns or you, you know, awaken those individuals at that level, uh, it just shifts. Well, by, by deleting the patterns, you're allowing people to practice. I think that I'm hearing you say is that when we're programmed a certain way, mm -hmm. we're not having self-love. 
You know, because right. you hate yourself, you hate how you look, you probably talk negatives sure. to yourself. Of course. So you're teaching people how to love the problem away. Yes. By loving themselves. I know uh, it's much more grander than that. It's much more grander than that. <laughs> <laughs> I am not dumbing it down. <laughs> but um, for the layman, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's the vibration of love. Well, it gets to you this know? point when I say I delete, say that time frame, say that yeah. you had issues, say, of like, say, six to ten. Mm -hmm. years, you know, like, it's like, oh, from six to ten you were abused or something happened to you, right? So I go in and delete that pattern from six to ten, okay? No matter what age they are, okay? Uh, a lot of my clients report back, go, Moth, I don't know what happened, but after you worked on me, I felt like a little six-year-old yeah. you know, living life in my current body. So what happens there is that, you know, if you were a movie, you know, that time frame, that scene, yeah wasn't good for you. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> so let's take that out, delete it, and then what they do, because it can't be blank anymore. Yeah. Uh, I used to fill it in for them, but it's a lot easier, better for them to fill it in. So they go through and live through six through ten, you know, maybe in mm -hmm. a matter of a month or two. Uh, they'll feel like a six-year-old, a seventy-year-old, and so on, and they'll re reframe that. Uh, and then it time, you know, it, it just ripples through, and then what they think about themselves you know, from that point on, just changes and then, well, their future changes. Because most people are living the trauma from their, their age as a child and they're carrying it forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just worked with somebody today as a, yeah. a, a coaching a client mm -hmm. and she was carrying a program from when she was seven years old. Right. You know, and that little seven-year-old girl was driving this 50-year-old person's life. Right. Little. Yeah. Yeah, her father, by the way, if you don't mind me saying, her father had a lot of had a severe impact uh, on her, you know what I'm saying? And she could never get over that trauma of her father um, from just reading her. It's, it's just, it's a shame that we don't heal in our youth. Because right. then we go down this road in life we probably should have never, we were never even meant to go on. We're not right. living our unique divine purpose yeah, exactly. when we don't yeah. heal ourselves. Right, we're just running programs from the yeah. past that are just like you said, off track. But if we start to awaken, and that's why I said any experience can, you know, can awaken you. Mm -hmm. that. If we were truly awakened and we went through that abuse, you know, obviously it's not the best thing for us. But we can get grander from it, right, and get stronger from it, mm -hmm. and then move forward and higher. But most of us aren't say that strong enough or that awakened enough to, to, uh, you know, learn from it. I don't want to get off topic because we still haven't talked about his second. second. Well, I was just thinking that. I think we should talk about your second yes. near-death experience, but I would like your son to come on with us. Oh, yes. Yeah. Because oh. he will have a really interesting story to share as yes. well, I'm sure. Because I think it's incredible, like, you know, you I've, I actually have Anybody? known a few people in my life who've had near-death experiences. Yeah. <clears throat> and the impact it has on the family yes. is tremendous. And now you're in a very unusual situation because yes. <laughs> you have this tremendous gift now, this blessing, yes. and you're using it. Right. And you weren't that person prior to this as right. far as how you're using your gift. Of course. You were right. awakened after the first one, but now right. tell us about the second one. Tell us so, what happened, and then you can tell us. <laughs> he, was, he was actually there on the second okay, one. Okay, so, okay. Which is really cool. Uh, so the second one, and this is what makes me say different, because there's over 800 near-death experiences a day documented here, in, just in the U.S. Alone. Is that right? Yeah. It's so, amazing. Yeah, so People why... People who have an experience, right. they die for a period of time and come back. Yes. They say it's just about 800. Wow. Documented. Um, so, so why aren't there more people like me? Mm -hmm. uh, again, basically I've been, say, groomed. You know, so you have a near-death experience to, say, escalate you much higher or awaken you much faster, okay? Uh, the second near-death, uh, we had a drowning. It was in Belize. Uh, we were on an inner tube, and, um, well, uh, the guide goes, well, keep your legs, you know, tied together, uh, otherwise you'll get sucked into these tributaries uh, and, and into these water underground caves and waterfalls. I don't know what happened. I had to unlock my legs from the group. Mm -hmm. So the, as soon as we pulled out, they went one way. I went, well, him and I. How many people were you with on that uh, inner tube originally? Six, seven, seven, 
Uh, it was like six and then seven, including the guy. Yeah. I'm just thinking because I'm I'm a very visual person. Like I yeah. see life in pictures, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this inner tube goes. I'd be freaking out if my husband and well, child were. Or... Yeah. Yeah, my other little my daughter, uh, she was freaking out. Yeah. Uh, and then the two boys and and me, we were on this two other inner tubes, and then um, there was this hole in the river, basically a lava tube. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right now it's a river, so I got sucked into that lava tube, and I pushed them away. Yeah, we uh, started to get sucked in. And then yeah, he, yeah, he I saved your life. Away, yeah. And then I got sucked under. And um, and again, this was what makes me different, um, is that I try to climb up, you know, so I try to push against the lava tube, mm -hmm. right, not to get sucked into the bowels of the earth. Uh, and I was climbing out, you know, I had, I didn't know it at the time, but my, I had pulled my fingernail, were pulled off, and oh. my back was bloody, you know, from, well, the lava, you know, trying to crawl up. Yeah. But you give up. Because there's so much water pressure coming sure, at you, sure. uh, and you well submit your will. Mm -hmm. yeah, right? you surrender. <laughs> mm -hmm. You surrender. As soon as I surrendered, uh, I saw my body float away, uh, and I, you know, I went through the lava. I could feel the coolness of the water, uh, and then I ascended into past the tunnel of light. And this is the difference: is most individuals who say path, who go into that tunnel of light, they never make it through because you're supposed to say die. Right and crossover. So I went through that tunnel of light this time around, um, and at that level, I started to see everything that we are, right? The grandness that we are, even at a higher level. Okay, no amount of love that you have here. If you well, if you multiply, say, any amount of joy or love that you have here by about a million times or so, you feel that grandness of love there. I was going to uh, ask you, what is that like? like yeah, it's like, that's inexplicable. Yeah. yeah. And there's no space, there's no time. You're just so present because it's so beautiful and so grand, right? Uh, that you just want to be. Did you, you see it when you knew there? Uh, no, you go past way beyond. You go past beyond yeah. that. So, wow. Um, and then I went further, actually, and I call this the beautiful blue space. So at that level that I was at, I was still had an identity of being in physical form, right? Okay. Right. So you go beyond that, and then you start to see that, well, you, your spirit, and spirit has no form, you, you transcend into this universe, right? Uh, and that universe, any knowledge that ever was, is, or will be, you have access to. Mm -hmm. So you are, say, that knowledge. Mm -hmm. right? So nobody ever, say, goes to that level and then comes back. Very mm -hmm. few people, hardly anybody at this in history right now mm -hmm. is at that level. Have you met anyone that uh, has been at that level yet? No. 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 You may. I mean, yeah, I you may. never know. Oh, definitely. No. I'm sure there's people out there. Maybe. Sure. Maybe not. Maybe not. You know? You never know. But what I've managed to do is like come back uh, and still connect to that universal database. So that's why I can say tap into you mm -hmm. and like read your like history. Mm -hmm. I can tap into anybody. Well, how did you survive? Dead or alive. Um, you know, it's just, I don't know what happened, but everything was just so grand and I would have stayed up there. No worries. Everyone says that. <laughs> I was like, wow, was Everyone so beautiful. And that. then all of a sudden it's just like black. And then I found myself like a hundred yards above river from where I got So you got like thrown wrong. out. Yeah, I don't know what happened. It's like, well, Do you know? obviously somebody loves no. me. Because you went somewhere, well, obviously someone loves you. Yeah, they yeah. must have just... Yeah. yeah, they were like, we've got a lot of work for you to do. Well, you've heard about, like, yeah. I've, I mean, I've heard about stories of people who kind of show up, they do something, and then they disappear, and nobody can really explain. Yes. They, it's an they, angel. They didn't see that, you know, they didn't have that experience. They yeah. didn't see the person. Yeah, so there was no mechanical intervention or anything like that. It's just, I don't know what happened. It I is, just, yeah. And I wasn't choking, I wasn't drowning or anything like that. I mean, my fingers and back were bloody, but other than that, uh, I'm going, wow. How did so you feel? Family, uh, well, how, and how did you feel after you woke up, though? Uh, I mean, obviously you're probably in pain and disoriented for a second. Yeah, I was disoriented more so because the physical world, I remember this really clearly, wasn't really here. I was oh. here, but I could see the under, like the frequencies of, say, the physical world. And in that moment, you knew your perception had changed yeah. forever. I was like, wow. I, I couldn't figure it out, you know, what was going on. But, but, you know, my wife uh, and kids, I could, we could hear them.
crying because they were on the other side of the cliff. Uh, I don't know where they where were. Where were you? So now you were with him, and then he saved you and pushed you away. Everybody too. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> where were you? <laughs> Please share with everybody your name. Uh, I'm Alex Sajali. Yeah, this is my dad. <laughs> He's my oldest son out of six. Oh, you're the first of six. Yeah. First. <laughs> you were with your dad when this experience happened. Yeah, Even so we got us, us two, and my and my brother got separated from the group, and we all started to go down that that hole. But yeah. your dad pushed you away, so you didn't go down. But you didn't. Yeah, have that there experience. was like a rock wall that me and my brother got on top of, and then the guide managed to pick us two up from there. Mm -hmm. How old were you at that time? How many years ago was that? Two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Wow. Uh, I would have been like nine, ten. Yeah. Were you freaking out? I was traumatized. Yeah, yeah. You know, I thought I was still dead. Yeah. 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 So even now, like going in water is like a little bit scary. Sure, he's getting better. Are you a good swimmer now? Yeah. Yeah. I'm great. I mean, I do yeah. a lot of wakeboarding and like water sports. I spend all day out on the lake during the summer. So. So what was your experience? So you you have this experience. You're freaking out. You think your dad is dead. Now you find him and he's alive. I you know I don't really remember honestly. I was just like so traumatized like. I had no idea what to believe, what was going on. It was, it was just so yeah. intense. And now, like, I know you heal people, and you, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've healed him of that, but there is memory. Of course. So oh, that's yeah. what's hard, I think, yeah. with the healing, right? We, right? we can heal, but we have memory. How do you handle that? I'm sure, because your dad travels a lot. So you, yes. do you have fear when he leaves your family? That exactly. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Like, right. But that could be a trauma. Right? Yeah. Or it could actually be a strength mm. for him. How do you use it as a strength? So, I think it keeps me safer. Yeah. It's like I'm kind of reckless sometimes. <laughs> so you're like, oh, I better be careful. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, being a parent. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> so, but then your dad us. comes back, but he's different, right? Like he's like you, like at what point? Oh did yeah. Change so, chat. <laughs> that's what we're well, supposed to talk about. Me, that. <laughs> it took me like four years and I normally don't talk about this part because nobody's ever asked. Oh, about. this I think so important minds want to know you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want to know if you don't mind talking about it. No, oh, no, no, okay. no, no okay. So it took me four years to understand like who we are at a higher level. So most of us look at our lives as human form and we're trying to have a spiritual experience, right? Uh, it took me about three, four years to flip that around and start to understand that we're actually spiritual beings having a human experience. Yes. And it sheds a whole new light. I understood that for a long time. You know? Mm -hmm. And it's just amazing because you know somebody's got your back, right? You know that your life is going to be good. You know that even, say, hard times, you know, are going to be, say, fantastic for mm -hmm. you, right? Because you know, well, you're good inside. You know that general emptiness that mm -hmm. we have? Yeah. We don't have, it. Well, all my kids are like that. Yeah, because they're all they're filled. Yeah, together. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah, so they really they're absorb enlightened. what I, you know, went through, and that's that's what I do. You know, to switch people, but they're with me all the time too. They're a little more enlightened. You can see it in the eye. Well, <laughs> that, no, definitely. But yeah. there's another level that we're not mentioning, and I think it's the fact of you have such tremendous gratitude for life yes. because oh, for you sure. really thought your dad was gone, yeah, and then to have that gift that oh my gosh, she's alive, yeah. you vibrate on gratitude because, yeah, to, I mean, that is just so powerful. It's a second chance. Mm -hmm. And that's what resets are about, about yeah. is second yeah. chances. Like, I feel like I got a second chance at life a couple times now, but I've had some things, whatever, but it's like to get that second chance at life, you want to do good with it. Or you get that second chance with someone that you love, mm -hmm. you want to do good with it because there's a different gratitude. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but, so, but now you were different. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what, what I Yeah, am. sorry. It's okay. Yeah. So you're different. Do you recognize he's different? Do you experience him? Is he talking differently to you? Are you. He's saying ideas and are you going, Dad, are you okay? Like, what's you the story? Your mind. Are you like okay with it? Well, like, he was a computer programmer before, I don't know if he said that. Yes. So, like, everything was just, like, so scientific, so straightforward, so, like, logical. Yeah. And so it just was so different when he was talking, like, spiritual stuff, you know. Like, Although I still am logical. Yeah, he's yeah. still super logical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, So course. he starts to speak the spiritual stuff, and you say... 
Well, I just didn't know what to think at first. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> how, how well, I was you? young too, so yeah. yeah. You know, I was pretty young. So you it said it was been four years. Was, yeah. yeah, it would be different yeah, it would be if you different were like this if it age. happened now. Yeah. yeah. So it took four years until you really embraced what right. you were, what you knew. Right, and you know, during that four years, and people go through it in in the process that I help them through, because it's a it's a series of awakening, and and basically what happens is that all the garbage that we've you know accumulated in this lifetime, you know, maybe previous lifetimes or family lineage, all that stuff has to get say pulled out of you. Mm -hmm. Right. It took me four years, especially to get to the level that say I. I resonate mm -hmm. where I can see people, uh, you know, see people's stories. Mm -hmm. You have to go to a certain, like, height, right, or maintain that frequency, right. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you can't maintain it, well, uh, you, you it'll destroy you. Like, purity will destroy you, mm -hmm. just like darkness will destroy yeah. you. So yeah. how do you maintain that frequency? So you have to go through a learning process. Mm -hmm. It took me about four years uh, to do that, and. You know, my kids obviously go, like, Dad, you know, you're going crazy here. You know, what I say, because I see things. You know, just like, you know, like you explained to your father, going, oh, they're going to cheat you yeah, up, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Well, I started to see tons of stuff like that. It's like, oh, this person's going to do this, or, you they're know. They're going to hurt you. Or, yeah, yeah, they have liver issues, or they have this and this and that, you know. So it's like, Dad, you're going crazy. Like, That's what I'm seeing. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you see the ulterior motives of, of, of the world. Mm -hmm. right. It has to be hard though, because it's like, especially I would imagine as a parent, you have to use your superpowers for good. Because maybe if you're dating and you're like, oh, she's not for you, <laughs> but you can't I really do that, that right? Because <laughs> they have that. to experience things too. Like, how do you? Well, now decide? he tests me. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, he, he tested me. It's like, that look at this picture. What do you think? It's like, oh, she's got mother issues. She's got. Uh, it's like, okay. You know, and after, I don't know, 10 million times, <laughs> it's like she, I was like, okay, he's really active. I'd be like, Dad, we're <laughs> going to lunch. The question, right, what you were saying about him yeah. having his own life experiences and learning from those, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doesn't he get kind of cheated out of that? Him? No, because I, I let him have his own life experience. But, you know, he just asks me, he's like, well, what do you think of this? Girl? I tell him, I never tell him not to date him. Right? Yeah. But it's like, no, you should go on and see, see if I'm accurate, because then it actually opens his awareness on you know, that ability, right? Because we all have that inner ability. It's not just like me. Right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Some people call you it You just have to tap into exactly. it. So. Have you helped your children tap into their abilities now? Oh, yeah. They're yeah. guided automatically. So you might not need him to look at these pictures <laughs> much longer. <laughs> not, <maybe> not. <laughs> yeah. So. He, he, get, he picks up on, on people really well. What do you think the biggest change in your dad was, though, from before your normal dad, the computer programmer, to now he's programming people. Like, how did you embrace that? Because it had to be weird to see him, you know, helping all these people, and maybe you just didn't understand it at first, because it's a grand idea, you know? Yeah. I guess the first time that I really was like, wow, this is, like, amazing, yeah. was uh, we were on a road trip to Chicago, and we stopped at a restaurant. And he said, I need to talk to this waitress. She's having trouble with her mom. Uh, and then, like, he sat her down, and, like, she burst out in tears, and he, like, yeah. heard her whole life story. I'm like, this is incredible. We've never met this girl before. And he just told her, like, everything about yeah. her and her mom. And it was just such a cool experience. Yeah. 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 We go through that a lot. So yeah. that was the first time I was just like, wow. What about your wife? Um, how did she... I mean, she probably knew, obviously, way before your kids knew, but right. how did she experience it with you? Well, let's just say she's a little more religious. Yeah. So I think the more they awakened, I got, the more she got into her religion, you know, like by the book. Yeah. She gets a little fearful. And pretty yeah. Positive. But she still, you know, she believes in what I do. In fact, you know, a lot of her friends, you know. You have helped them, you know, I'm sure, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But she, again, a little more fearful on the inside because of that religious. Uh, and by the way, it's nothing religious or spiritual. Okay? Uh, in fact, I actually help people enlighten uh, to understand their religion even more at a mm -hmm. higher level, at a pure level, than what, you know, what we read about. So how does the law of attraction fit into your work? Sure. So, again, most, most people or most people's paradigms 
concepts, psychology, uh, you know, motivation, all that, is really at a physical level. Okay? So the law of attraction, I totally believe in it, but, but, but why people have a hard time, say, shifting their lives, okay, or it takes 10, 20 years to shift somebody's lives, it doesn't have to take that long. Right? Uh, if we get to, say, the base level or the core level of how, say, or why things are happening for them. Right? So if you are running, say, programs of abuse, no matter what you do, say, at this level, at the physical level, that law of attraction will work for you. You will run programs of abuse. That's why people get into the same relationships over and over and over again. Right? But if you change that basic program, the underlying, I call it core frequencies, right? you change that, and almost immediately the law of attraction works, say, for you rather than against you. Well, and the biggest thing that is, you know, no matter who you're listening to about the law of attraction is if you you have to always feel the joy, feel the love, feel the excitement about what you're trying to attract because then you're going to attract it. Well, true. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, not that that's what you're teaching. I'm just saying, right. like, everyone I've ever listened to is like, you know, if you want to attract your soulmate, if you want to have abundance, true. Is to be excited about it so it can come to you so you're opening the sure. door. But, but, you know, there's people who actually say, instead of always trying to, say, create that space, mm -hmm. right? There's actually people who live from that space. And that's what I'm Which talking about. You don't have yeah. to, you know, keep generating. Um, well, this is, this is like addictions, okay? I, I help a lot of people with, like, addictions. Okay. So, so what happens is, like, you know, you go through, like, AA. Right? Is it A or yeah, A? Yeah, A or A or NA or... Yeah. yeah. So, and again, it's a fantastic program. I'm not knocking it down or anything like that. It's, they've helped millions of people, you know. Uh, but what happens is that, you know, they go into a bar, they smell liquor, and then, you know, they... It's on again. It's on again. Yeah. Right. So why is that? Right? Uh, what I do for them is, like, totally, say, delete that program, and they can go into a bar. Uh, and it's just like me. I don't drink. So they can go into a bar, and it's like... No, not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not through willpower or anything like that. You know, um, Anthony Robbins. Again, I love his work. Nothing wrong with it. But that man is fantastic. It's through sheer willpower he can motivate you, push you into those higher spaces. Mm -hmm. You know. But what if I got say rid of what's the base core, and then you went to an Anthony Robbins seminar and studied say the logistics or the physicalness of this world, because that's what he teaches you, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it'll be longer lasting, you know, uh, it'll be easier transformations for people. You make it more seamless, yes, because they exactly. don't have those blocks in them yeah. anymore. Business. Business. You work with oh, CEOs. Yes. yes. Man, you're, you're talking about manifestation and creating more wealth. Yes. A company doing better, clearing stuff so that right. they can evolve. Right. Exactly. But in a business, I know, like, for instance, sometimes when I was consulting and working with staffs, mm -hmm. you can have three different staff members. If they're all three are on a different page, different, right. they're heading in a different direction, right. the saying is a house divided upon itself cannot stand. Exactly. How do you unite and bring them together with your work? Right. So, again, we go to, for example, like sales training. Sales training, marketing, you know, people spend, you know, tens of thousands, right? They take their employees out. Uh, they come back in a month. And then I'll settle back to, you know, why doesn't that stick? Again, because like you said, you know, they're all different. But what if you got rid of, say, the underlying problems, right? Their core issues of what's going on, right? And then what, what I call a mastermind group, mm -hmm. right? That creates, say, a general theme mm -hmm. around that. Uh, that's the way my company works. Everybody, say, interconnected. And they actually say, it, it's like... Uh, you know, football or, 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 or sports people, you know, when they're in the zone, mm -hmm. right? They know exactly what that other person is, say, thinking about. So that's what we get into, say, the companies. Not just like the CEOs, but, you know, if you shift a CEO. You shift the culture. You shift the culture of the company, and then the employees are much happier. So, so you know, we have programs like that. Um, also with CEOs, you know, I work with a lot of people who make a lot of money. And they're not happy with the mm -hmm. money. You know, it's really a burden on them. You know, why does that happen? You know, obviously there's a lot of re reasons. You know, some some people, uh, for example, you kind of had that when I first met you. You know, it's like, okay, I'm going to be successful. I'm going to make a lot of money, but 
oh my god, does that mean I'm not a good person anymore? Type feel. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah, it's the generational yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Like religious and all that stuff. It's yeah. like, well, you can't make too much money. You know what I mean? Because that's against mm -hmm. God's so, will. Yeah. You know, so it's understanding a sin to hold on that, to it. Yeah, so yeah. understanding that at a deeper level. But then again, there's, there's ways where you don't have to say burden yourself with the physical things like money because money does become a burden to people. Mm -hmm. yeah, if they're not, if it's not done right, they can go crazy. I like what you said too. You had said money's a magnifier. Yes, money is a magnifier. Yeah. Uh, it magnifies all your weaknesses that mm -hmm. you have. Magnifies all your strengths. Unfortunately, the weaknesses that uh, you, we have, you can't hide it. You know, with money. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It comes out. You can't have that facade, right? Uh, this is really talking about true wealth you're true inside, so the money is actually a, a side dish for you. It's more a, of an ornament to, say, bless you mm -hmm. with, right? Mm -hmm. Than something that, say, you try to create yourself because you don't know who you are at a deeper level. And you had said that to me. You said that I was getting the wealth, the true wealth of the spiritual wealth, like the wealth that yes. Jesus gives me. Exactly. And then the money was going to come, but it wouldn't matter because I already had Right. You know, mm -hmm. that kind of wealth in me. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And now, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, well, uh, and along with business is, is, is that new business paradigm where you're not looking at the bottom line uh, all the time because the bottom line is there already. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the most efficient way uh, of doing things already. So you actually say save money in this new business paradigm. Because right? you're getting, say, understandings or you're getting, say, new ideas, inventions. That's where uh, inventions come from, right? It's not somebody, you know, trying to figure it out. Well, most great inventions came from the ether, right? So I can help them, pay, say, tap into the, their certain field of business, right, for the next big thing. I know you work with a lot of CEOs and a lot of companies. Yeah. And when you're working with a business, yeah. so there's multiple people. So say you're doing a group. Um, expertise healing of the sure. infrastructure yes. so you're seeing all this energy amongst all these different people mm -hmm. so by doing the group session and healing them effectively you're healing the infrastructure yes definitely. how are you able to do that even um, and, and have it as a lasting thing with multiple mm -hmm. people because you're dealing with so many different mm -hmm. people and personalities mm -hmm. and they're wearing their uniforms where they maybe have their mask on of great makeup exactly. and hair and a five hundred dollar suit, but really they're like a hot mess on the inside. Of you know course, what I mean? Because I've been that girl a lot of times. Well, not a five hundred dollar suit, but you know I've been a hot mess a lot in my life. You know, but no one knew. So it's yeah. like, but you're walking in and you're like, I need to fix this. These people or this company exactly. could fail. Right. Right. So I can see mm -hmm. through that hot mess. Yes. Because <laughs> well, I work out with a lot of models. Yeah. In the LA area as well, you know, and it's like they're perfect on the outside, yeah. right? But it's like, honey, let's talk about the inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Get your insides to match your outside. Exactly. Vice versa. Yeah. And you, well, you look prettier on the, the outside. Yeah. If you're pretty on the inside. Absolutely. Sure. So, so with a company though, it creates what I call a mastermind group. A mastermind, anytime two or more individuals get together, mm -hmm. it creates another personality, right? And that personality actually say, dictates what happens in that company. That personality rules the company mm -hmm. structure. That makes sense. It's not the CEO uh, or anybody like that. It's, it's a, it's a it's combination. Collective. It's a collective, exactly. It's a totally different personality that shows up. So if you change that personality or that mastermind, right, everything, everybody starts behaving accordingly. Mm -hmm. okay? And not just in the business sense, their personal lives uh, get a lot better. Yeah, right? they're so they're happy happier work. employees. Mm -hmm. right? the, the biggest, uh, I guess, expense that the companies have is employee downtime. Sure. It costs them a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But what if you had happy employees that actually liked being at work? Mm -hmm. at, you know? uh, and there's a lot of people come to me, Moss, I hate my job, I hate this, I, you know, I want to get another job. But you know, you switch them around, right? They become internally happy, that self-satisfied. And they go, Moss, I don't know what it is, but I love my job now. You know, Here's a question for you. So, yeah. you are a computer programmer. Mm -hmm. You have this experience. Yes. 
and you get up one day and tell your family, I'm quitting my job and I'm living my purpose. And they're mm -hmm. thrilled. <laughs> no, it didn't work out. Did they call 911? <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, six kids. <laughs> we, we, no, no, we're not quitting the pro programming. <laughs> no, it didn't happen like that at all. Uh, actually, he, he, my wife started it all because uh, she, she used to get headaches all the time. Mm. And, and uh, you know, she used to get these migraines. And one of these days, I go, I go, honey, let, she got a migraine. I go, let me work on you. Mm. What? What is that? <laughs> so it, it was just like an automatic thing. It's like I put, I almost put my hands over. I didn't even touch her head. Uh, and it's like, wow, that, it disappeared. I'm going, okay. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, the medication. It has been put to this. Yeah. Like so I was actually excited. I go, honey, when's your next headache? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, do you, do you have a headache yet? And finally, she got a headache, and uh, you know, I go, okay, I'm gonna test it out before she tries anything. So I put my hands around, and it was like gone. So, so then I worked on the kids, you know, and I can work on. It, or if you've seen like YouTube videos of people, mm -hmm. you know, they mm -hmm. move all around. I saw so, you do it, yeah. yeah. So it's like, well, I thought I had a cool magic trick. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But then people would go, wow, you know, ever since you worked on me, my headache went away, or this went away, and that went away. You know, so I started working on friends, and then friends of friends, and so on and so on, and then it just get it got more and more busy that way. The domino effect. Yeah. And exactly. it exploded. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and it just totally exploded. At what point do you decide, I'm no longer programming? Oh. I'm going to program people. Yeah. Uh, gosh, um, I think it was like 2011. It was just, I got so many people, and I was getting invited to other cities to go, hey, can you talk, can you do an event for us, and so on. So it's really all organic, mm -hmm. uh, and even back then, you know, I used to spend like an hour and a half on a person. Mm -hmm. okay? I can transform individuals in about five minutes. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, my ability has gotten so You're so in tune. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost like surgical, mm -hmm. really. You can just cut it out. Yeah, it's like even before somebody say talks about Moss, I have this. It's like, oh, you've got this going on. You know, let's just get it out, and then they just shift. I like read, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I read uh, one of your reviews, which I thought was really incredible, was the woman with scoliosis. Her whole life, thirty oh. some years, in one session with you, her back was straight. Her whole family was like, "Yeah, I've never seen. We can't even believe it. I mean, just totally disbelief." Yeah, I mean, there's. And that's not, and I know that's just one example, but that was no, amazing. But that's, not, that's a really it amazes me. I don't read those. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's people who cure themselves of cancer. Again, I say cure themselves of cancer. Yeah. and I don't cure you yeah, of, of anything. Yeah, of course. Right. Uh, they start walking. You know, they start getting better jobs. They fall into perfect relationships and so on. Obviously, you know, there's a transition period. Period. Yeah, uh, that they go through. But yeah, it's it's just amazing what people can actually do once they're awakened to who they know that they are, mm -hmm. not think that they are. You know? I know. I just well, got so many questions. Well, it's a shame, like. too, and, and then go ahead, but, <laughs> like, it's a shame, too, because some people are, like, on the way to being awakened, so they have one foot in, one foot out, one yeah. foot in, one foot out, and it sounds to me like you're helping people dive in, which is amazing. Right, because I awaken their spirit, their mm -hmm. spirit literally takes control and just grabs their hand. It's like, all right, this is what we're doing. Uh, we're going to do it this way. We're going to do X, Y, and Z. And no matter what, you know, no matter what habits you've had in the past, right? Uh, spirit doesn't care. You just get pulled along or you get dragged along. If you're fighting it, you'll get dragged along to the point that you awaken. And then, you know, you go together, spirit, and you walk. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. What were you going to say? I was so involved in that <laughs> yeah, You forget? I lost it. Well, no, um, no, but I feel that that's what happened to me um, unconsciously, like when I started writing the children's books. Yeah. It was just like, God kept speaking through me. I was writing Reset at the time, mm -hmm. and I would like sit and pray and meditate, and this all these stories kept coming through me, and not to sound like a crazy person, but it was almost like, they were both fighting each other, like had this yeah. kid's idea, and you know, that's about love and kindness, but the adult book's about love and kindness, but the adult book's heavier, so it was like, maybe I needed to write those to like, sure. keep myself sane a little bit while you're writing such the heavy stuff, but it was amazing, and it's, 
it was very intimidating to follow what God was telling mm-hmm. me to do because I don't have children, I'm not married yet. People were like, you're crazy, have you just lost your mind? Right. But then when I, once I started doing the readings, I was like, now I know what God was doing in my life because these little kids were like freaking out and they love. So yeah, and but it just shows you like what you're saying is if you do allow yourself to walk with your spirit, mm-hmm. that incredible things happen. Oh, definitely. You know, and definitely. you do have joy and yeah. it's amazing. It's amazing. It's about it's, we have Chinese medicine. Yes. Yeah. In Chinese medicine, there's a lot of, in Qigong even, mm-hmm. one of the things that we try to do is release stored uh, trauma from the body. Yes. Uh, like we do the six healing sounds and mm-hmm. different things like that. How does that play into what you're doing? Because if you're helping people cure themselves of cancer and mm-hmm. scoliosis, in essence, you're using some of the same principles. Yes. Exactly. So I release, say, the traumas or awaken them. Uh, like in Chinese, they, they awaken, say, the, the, the physical mm-hmm. being. Okay. Uh, I do it at a spirit level. So mm-hmm. it's just a, a, a much deeper level. And then, you know, the Chinese medicine or the practice that, he, that you know, would Qigong. be practiced, yeah. uh, Qigong, uh, would actually say be more effective mm-hmm. for them. So what I do is that rather than, you know, from the physical into the spirit, right? Uh, I actually work on the spirit, spirit. and physical. Mm-hmm. So that's why any religion or anything that you practice, medications or anything that you do, uh, actually just say it works better for you. Okay. I'm not saying all that stuff is garbage. You know, this is a new reality. Uh, I'm not saying that at all. But let's clean out, say, the garbage that's inside us so we can see the religion, we can see, say, the business practices, we can see the Qigong or medications or supplements in a different way. Well, the biggest thing I talk about in Reset is spiritual weight. Yes. And that is what our spiritual weight, I mean, that's really like the whole vein of the book. Like the essence of the book is that, you know, our life experiences help us, they cause us to gain so much spiritual weight. So the anger sticks on you, the bad relationship, the abuse from maybe your parents, Mm -hmm. whatever happened, and you just start getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And then you either it manifests physically, so maybe it's weight gain, maybe it's migraines, maybe it's weight loss, hair loss, whatever it is. So the the goal is to break the shackles in your life. Yes. So you can live your divine purpose. Exactly. And that is what you're doing. Yes, I just help you remove those shackles. You you break the yeah, you take (laughs) them off. Exactly. What are three tips you, or just a few tips, whatever you want, you would give to our audience mm-hmm. that's going through a reset yes. that needs to, you know, start today? You know, I, I think you should always start today. Like, don't wait till tomorrow. You know, whether it's just, like you said, enjoy your shower. What are three tips for a reset? Uh, one, uh, again, from what I've seen with other people, or mm-hmm. other people tell me, really one of the fastest ways to transform. So if you're new to me, I would listen to my podcast. Mm-hmm. I love right. your podcast, by yeah. the way. Love them. Uh, and that podcast, actually, listening to me, uh, and people even listening or watching the show, they'll actually feel different mm-hmm. through through this. And uh, just listening to me, they'll start to shift or be awakened. So, so just listening to the podcast, get your feet wet. It's free. You know, you'll see if it's for you or not. It'll shift you. Uh, but if you don't do, and mm-hmm. then we always have a uh, medic with me. But if you don't do anything with me, just totally, totally be aware of where you are. Say, and, 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 you know, if you're angry or if you're abused or if you don't have money, just face up to it and just be really, really honest with yourself. You'll actually start to see that you'll enjoy where you are. And that's the fastest way to get out of where you are into more of a blissful state. And how can people find you? Um, what is your website? What are yeah. your Instagram, sure. your Facebook, all that? Uh, Masajadi, M-A-S-S-A-J-A-D-Y dot com. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can YouTube me, uh, Google me. SoundCloud. Uh, SoundCloud. iTunes. <laughs> iTunes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, everywhere. Yes. Um, yeah. It's amazing. Um, on When we did the podcast on iTunes, we were the fastest growing podcast. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. And it's all organic growth. You know, and you have a tour coming up, so do you want to talk about that? Everywhere. Yeah, you're doing a world tour right now. Yes, we're doing a world tour. We'll be in the UK, we'll be in Paris, uh, and then later on we're doing a cruise on the Greek islands. We're, uh, actually, I'm 
everywhere. So take a look at the website because we got more and more events uh, planned. That's great. So. Well, I love the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. And what I find, you know, as a Christian, what I love the most is that you are touching so many different lives of yes. all different kinds of cultures and showing yes. them what love can do. Exactly. You know, what God can do in your life. Exactly. And you are changing people's mindsets and healing them at the same time. And yes. one of the podcasts I listened to that you did, and I know we have to wrap this up, but I loved how you talked about, you know, people start to um, have all these ideas. Religion ruins the love of God. Yes. Because one bad pastor, one bad priest, wh whatever yes. your religion is, yep. you know, it can totally distort what yes. God is really about. And God is really about love. Exactly. And you're operating on the vibration of love. Yes. The vibration of love. <laughs> I don't no. know why I'm stuttering. And it's amazing, it's beautiful, and it's healing people. Yes. So, so yeah, and it transcends, you know, uh, you know, race, religion. Of course. Uh, you know, culture, whatever, because we start to see who we truly are, right? Spirit and having a grand human experience. You know. And you have one of your posts on your website is of John, you know, about um, love. It's from the Bible, oh, one of the quotes. Yeah. And, and I loved that because I was like, it is. It's all about love, yeah. and that's yeah. what that's what we're about. Yeah, you know, exactly. resetting your life yeah. so yes. you can live in love and abundance. Yes. So, I congratulate you. Oh, thank you so and much. And I thank you for being on our thank show. Thank you for being on our show. It is really Pleasure. an honor. Oh, I feel like we could talk yeah. for days. We could talk. For days. <laughs> I would love to have you back. Oh, I'd love it. Yeah, love yeah. It. Thank yeah. you, yeah. Alex. Too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for yes. sharing. Yes. I know you weren't planning on it, so thank you. <laughs> At some point in the future, yeah. we'll do reset retreats. Yeah. So we'll oh, yeah, we're right. going to do reset retreats. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I'd love to be. Yeah, yeah we would love to. We would love. We have to collaborate yeah. somehow. Yeah. We can do a lot of stuff. I think we could. Yeah. 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 I'll be in New York, I think, in June. Okay. okay. Yeah, beginning of June. So, so we'll talk about it. We'll have lunch June or something. Yeah, we'll yeah. lunch. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Okay. Meet today. Oh, yeah, the, I would like to meet Faye. She coordinates everything. Okay. Yeah. I liked her. She was really nice. Yeah, she was really nice. All right. For our well, audience. for our audience, they should do it with us. <laughs> yeah. So we say reset, reset because, because you deserve, deserve it. it. So let's do it together. Yeah. Reset, reset because, because you deserve, deserve it. it.